As part of an upcoming video project I'm working on for the channel, I came across a number of mid-2012 13-inch MacBook Pros, and one of them in particular works just fine. However, it's a bit of a mess. It definitely needs some help. So in today's video, we're gonna be working to completely restore this computer and get it nice and cleaned up. Also, as I mentioned, this is part of a larger video project that I'll be uploading on the channel sometime in April. So definitely make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and turn on notifications because you won't want to miss it. So with that, let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by iFixit, my go-to source for parts and tools. For this repair, I'm gonna have to do a lot of disassembly to get all the dirt out of this thing. The ports are completely gummed up, the keys are kinda crunchy when you type on them. This goes well beyond the purview of a simple wipe down with a microfiber cloth. In order to get this MacBook completely cleaned out, it's gonna need to be fully broken down and cleaned on a part-by-part -part basis. Fortunately, it's super easy to do all of that with iFixit's repair guides, and I'm gonna be using my trusty ProTech toolkit, which I've had for nearly four years now. So if you wanna take on a project like this for yourself, check out the resources in the description below, which include links to iFixit's teardown guides for unibody MacBook Pros, the ProTech toolkit, as well as the parts and the cleaning solutions that I'll be using to get this MacBook nice and polished. This MacBook in particular was rescued from a recycling center where it was going to be scrapped, as I'll go over in a future video. But it works perfectly fine, aside from its obviously less than brilliant condition. It might not look super great right now, but underneath this, is actually a very usable, solid MacBook. It's got a battery that still holds a charge. It's a great candidate for restoration. So sit back, relax, and let's get this thing cleaned up. So before we even start getting to the deep clean portion, the first thing I did was do a quick surface level clean to get rid of the crumbs and the super visible dirt that was coming off on my hands. This thing is absolutely disgusting, so I wanted to give it a wipe down first. So realistically, this computer is such a mess that if we want to actually clean it fully, we're going to have to strip it down completely. So the first thing I did was remove the battery, hard drive, RAM, and then the logic board. With the major components removed, it was time to really get down to the meat of this computer. And in order to do that, I had to remove the hard drive data connector with a couple of Phillips head screws, remove the screws that hold the trackpad into the top case, and then remove the optical drive and the mid wall.
So now it's time to remove the backlight, and that's one of the reasons why cleaning the keyboard on these MacBook Pros is so difficult. Usually the backlight is treated as a disposable thing, so if you have to buy a replacement keyboard for one of these MacBook Pros, oftentimes they'll come bundled with a third-party backlight. But I don't really like how those look, and I want to kind of keep this thing original. So the goal here is to keep the original backlight, which means we have to be very, very careful when unsticking it from the back of the keyboard, because this thing will tear or rip very, very easily. Yuck, it's covered in food and crumbs and hair. Disgusting, we gotta take this keyboard out to really clean it. Now, in order to remove the keyboard from these Unibody MacBook Pros, there are 67 teeny tiny Phillips head screws holding it in place. That might sound like a lot, but keep in mind that every Retina MacBook Pro has a keyboard that is fused to the top case with rivets, meaning that any sort of cleaning or replacement requires completely ditching the entire top case. So, I'll take it. Sure enough, the spaces in between the keys are absolutely filthy. There's a ton of debris and oils and bits of caked on food. It's really kind of gross, so we're going to have to clean everything. The backlight, the keyboard, even the top case, because a lot of debris got stuck on the aluminum as well. Even the cutouts for the ports have built up dirt and grime, so they're gonna need to be cleaned out as well. Predictably, the recessed area that holds the trackpad also has caked up food and debris, so we're going to have to clean all of that out as well. Now that the top case is nice and clean, we can put 67 tiny screws back in to reattach the keyboard.
Given the state of the rest of this computer, I was surprised at how clean the logic board was. There's really no need to tidy up more than just a little bit of surface level dust that has built up over the years. However, the ports, and more specifically, the MagSafe port, did not escape the grossness of the rest of this computer. So we are gonna have to give those a nice clean. With most of the components from the top case now cleaned, we'll move on to the bottom cover. I did think that it was necessary to replace the rubber feet as they had become so brittle and dry that they weren't really doing very much, so we'll rejuvenate this computer with some fresh rubber feet. Next, we'll move on to the display, which was where the most visible dirt and grime had built up. So in addition to using the usual screen cleaning fluid, I also used some sanitary wipes, which did a very good job of picking up a lot of this deeply ingrained dirt. Finally, on this display, the clutch cover has been destroyed. It snapped in half. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that with another used one. And so with the cleaning complete, we can begin reassembling the MacBook. Now, in addition to rejuvenating this thing, I figured I would give it a little bit of an upgrade. So we'll throw in a 512 gigabyte solid state drive and we'll upgrade it to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And with that, this MacBook is all good to go. The difference is absolutely astonishing, and this whole process was very inexpensive. The only cosmetic parts I replaced were the hinge cover and the bottom feet. So in total, it was about $10 in parts, not including the upgrades I gave to this machine. With a 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM, this computer doesn't feel like one that needs to be recycled but like one that could be used for years to come. And yeah, sure, it's not in the best condition. It's got some pretty deep dents and scratches along the enclosure, but remember, this computer was destined to be scrapped. It was deemed unworthy of help, and I was able to fix it up for about $10. Who knows what would have happened to this MacBook Pro if we didn't step in and give it a new lease on life. As I mentioned earlier, it was rescued from a recycling center, which might not sound so bad, at least they were going to get some use out of it. Well, you'll definitely wanna stay tuned for another video that I'm working on with this MacBook Pro, as well as a number of similar machines, where we'll talk about why that might not be the case. So definitely make sure you're subscribed, you're not gonna wanna miss that video, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of this restoration process. Did I do a good job? And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.